Welcome everyone, this is Gary D. Tonicourt for more than a snapshot.com. And in this video, I want to take a look at some of the improvements that were made in the October 2020 version 10 update of Lightroom Classic. One of the first things you'll see when you load it up is that it'll give you the option to rename your catalog. It's going to update your old catalog to the version 10 catalog. It will let you keep the old version, and if you want, give it a new name uh, to the new version. So you can see here, on mine, it says Lightroom Catalog 2. That was the original name. And then it added version 10 for the update. So once you're updated and ready to go, we'll take a look in this video at what some of the changes are going to be. Of course, you have the typical changes. It's going to add support for more cameras. And if you want to click on the link in my website to the actual Adobe website, you can see what cameras they've added. And they have some speed, you know, improvements to certain tools, and, and we'll get into more of that as the video goes. One of the updates to Lightroom Classic version 10 is the ability to do live tether capture if you have a Canon camera. So I'm going to try this out, and to do this, all you have to do is go to File, and then to Tethered Capture, and then Start Tethered Capture. And then it's going to provide you with some options here. You can give your session a name, and you can segment your photos. And this is how they're going to be um, named. It'll have whatever name you put here, and then a numbering system. If you want to change that, you can come in here to the custom settings and name it any way you want. It will be saving DNG files, so they are raw files. And then here in the destination, I'm going to save it in a special folder in my pictures folder. If I wanted to at the same time, I can add it to a collection. So if I create a collection in Lightroom called uh, Tethered Capture, um, I can put it inside of that folder. And you can have metadata and keywords attached. So if I... Uh, See, I add a keyword here, and uh, then you're ready to start. So if I click OK, it's going to try to detect my camera, and I'm going to turn the camera on. I'm using the Canon SL2. Now I'm just hoping that the uh, EOS utility here doesn't conflict with it, but I just turn that off. Now I can see here this is the camera controls, and it did recognize my Canon Rebel SL2. So to make it uh, live, I have to click the live button, and you get this little uh, pop-up screen. All right, and it's very dark right now because I have to turn on a light. Okay, so now I should be ready to take pictures. Uh, there is an auto fo an auto focus button, but I don't see any way to um, you know select a point for where to focus. So I guess we're relying on the camera's autofocus to get it right. All right, so then I have some control over some options. So I could change the shutter speed if I wanted to. And there you can see the image just got a little bit brighter. And let's see if I go back to where I had it and try changing the ISO. Yeah, so that, that's controlling the camera fine. I'm in manual mode. Now, I'll try, you know, try taking a picture. Like, So this is the live capture window, and this is where the actual image comes out. So let's try this again. All right, so as you can see, every time I take a picture, it updates, and then you can go back through all of the images that you took. And then, of course, in the develop settings, you have full control over editing your RAW file. So that's pretty cool. If you have a Canon camera, this might be something worth checking out. It's very simple to connect. I just connected my uh, Canon SL2 with a USB cord directly into my uh, USB port of my computer. And uh, it seems to work fine. 
Um, they are planning on having support for other cameras soon, I believe. And um, it's an interesting new feature. The second new feature they've added to version 10 is some new ways to zoom in on your image. So, of course, we've always had the ability to click on the screen and zoom in to 100% or whatever you previously had set it to be, and then you click again and it zooms out. Now, here are the two new methods. The first one, if you hold down Shift, you'll see that the little magnifier has little arrows to the left and right. So if I hold down Shift and drag to the uh, right, it zooms in. And if I drag to the left, I can zoom out. And this is kind of cool because you can very quickly zoom in and out to any level that you want very fast. So that's nice. And again, you can just click on the screen once to reset it. The second method is if you hold down Control, you'll see that you get this little square. And then if I draw a rectangle or a square, and I let go while holding control, it will zoom into just that area. So another nice way to zoom in very specifically to any part of the image that you want. And those are the two new zoom features in Lightroom version 10. The next new feature is enhanced GPU performance for some of the tools that we have up here, like the gradient tool or the brush tool. So let's take a look and see if that's any different. It's supposed to be faster. If I use the gradient tool and drag out a gradient here, and, uh, you know, the adjustments are very responsive. It's kind of hard to see if that's any faster than it was before. But uh, here I'm using the brush. Let's say I take it down a little bit, painting over that building and then making further adjustments. Again, it's very responsive. It's hard to say whether it's really faster, but we'll take their word for it. It does seem to work very well. That is the new uh, enhancements to the brush and the gradient tools. Previously in Lightroom Classic, we had the ability to change the toning of the image with something called split toning, where you could add a color to the highlights or a color to the shadows. So they've changed this around a little bit that it uh, adds more tools and more refinement. And now they're calling this panel color grading. And you can see here that you can adjust different parts of the image. So here you can adjust just the shadows, just the midtones, just the highlights, or everything all at once. And if you click this one, you can see all three wheels at the same time. Plus, they give you some options for blending and balancing. So I'll just do a very rough uh, color balance change here. So in the midtones, let's say that uh, I want to try making this a little bit red. And the shadows, I might want to make those a little bit more blue. And obviously, the further you drag out on the wheel, the more intense the color will shift. And then on the highlights, I'll drag it up towards yellow. And then we'll take a look at blending. You can increase or decrease the amount of blending. So I'll just find a spot where I like it. And then the balance shifts between the blue and the yellow. I think I like a bit more, a little bit more yellow in this image. And there you have it with just a few. Um, movements of the slider. We have a different looking grade to this image and I'm sure you can have a lot of fun playing around with the colors in all of your photography.